Hi, this is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English, and in this video I'm going to describe um, what the output looks like from an SPSS factorial ANOVA analysis. So we'll just walk through this output. Uh, these um, tables are from tables 2 and 3, 10.2 and 10.3 in chapter 10 of Statistics in Plain English 4th edition. So let's take a look at what you get when you run a factorial ANOVA in SPSS. Um, up here we'll start uh, with this descriptive statistics and the dependent variable is valuing of English coursework. This was um, something where I asked high school students to indicate on a scale from 1 to 5 um, how much they value the work that they do in English, so how important they think it is, how useful they think the, the work is, um, how interesting they think it is, that kind of stuff. And what I did is we've got two independent variables. One is gender, so we've got girls here and boys here. And then the other independent variable is grade level. So um, we've got ninth graders and 11th graders. So if you look at this cell of the table, you'll see 9th grade girls, 11th grade girls, and the total for girls. So 9th grade girls have an average score of 3.7427 on the valuing of English, and 11th grade girls have a mean of 3.7337. You can see those are very similar means. And the girls total across the two grade levels have a mean of 3.7389. Here's the results for boys. You can see boys in ninth grade have a mean of 3.753, which is very similar to the girls' mean. But then in 11th grade, um, boys have a lower mean, 3.4833. So it drops a little bit for 11th grade boys. And then overall, this is the mean for boys, 3.6198 compared to a slightly higher mean for girls. In this column, we see the standard deviations. And in this column, we see the sample sizes. So this is telling us there's 296 ninth grade girls, 209 11th grade girls, 214 ninth grade boys, 209 11th grade boys. And then this is total uh, across the genders. There's 510 ninth graders, 418 11th graders, and um, it's within these cells, we see there's 423 boys across all grade levels and 505 girls across the grade levels. So that gives us our descriptive statistics. And then down here, um, we get our ANOVA results with our F values and degrees of freedom and such. So here's what it looks like. In any factorial ANOVA, you get uh, ANOVAs that tell you the main effects for each independent variable and then you get an ANOVA for the interaction. So um, the gender main effect, we look at the sum of squared deviations. This is going to be the sum of squared deviations between groups. There's two levels of the gender variable, so the degrees of freedom for between groups is one. And then here, error, down here, we see the sum of squares error is 747.555. That is um, just the within groups, or error um, sum of squares. And the degrees of freedom for that is 924. Our total sample is 928. There's four different groups, two for gender, two for grade level, 928 minus 4 gives us our degrees of freedom error, which is 924. And that is our mean square error. So that is going to be the denominator of all of our F values. All of our F ratios will have 0.809 as the denominator because the mean square error or mean square within groups is the denominator of the F ratio. And then the mean square between is the numerator. So we have three different F values. For gender, we have 3.268 is the mean square between, 0.809 is the mean square error, 
That divided by that is and that gives us an F value of 4.039. The p-value is 0.045, which is just a little bit under 0.05, so it is statistically significant. And then the partial eta squared says how much of the variance exp is explained by gender, how much of the total overall variance is explained by gender. And as you can see, 0.004 is not much. It's very little, but it's statistically significant. So remember, statistical significance is affected by sample size. This is a pretty big sample, 928 kids. Um, so although we have a statistically significant result, uh, it's not doesn't have a lot of practical significance because our effect size is very small. Nonetheless, let's continue. So this statistically significant main effect for gender tells us that overall there's a difference in the means of the boys and girls, regardless of grade level. So overall, boys have a lower mean than girls on average on this valuing of coursework in English. If we look at the main effect for grade level, which is over here, we find mean square between is 4.414, mean square error is 0.809, this gives us an F value of 5.456. It is statistically significant at the P less than 0.05 level because P equals 0.02. And here's our effect size. Again, very small, not a lot of practical significance. So this tells us that our average valuing of school is different for one grade level than the other. If we go back up to our descriptive statistics and we look at the comparison of the means for ninth graders and 11th graders. Here, we see the mean for 11th graders is a little bit lower, and that's what's causing the significant main effect for grade level. Finally here, number three, we have our, oops, I misspelled that, gender, it should be gender, not gender, gender by grade level interaction. That is the mean square. Um, between groups, mean square error, F value, and that is statistically significant. Again, very small effect size, but let's interpret this anyway. So this is telling us the difference in valuing of schoolwork between boys and girls depends on the grade level that they're in. So if we go up and look at the means again, we can see here the means for ninth and 11th grade girls, very similar, means for ninth grade boys, very similar, means for 11th grade boys, quite different. So this is saying that the main effect for gender that we saw, where girls have a higher mean than boys, that's not true for all boys. That's just true for 11th grade boys, because 9th grade boys have basically the same mean as 9th and 11th grade girls. And the main effect for grade level, with um, 11th graders valuing school less or valuing English work less than ninth graders, that's not really true for both genders. That's not true for girls, but it is true for boys. So this is telling you that the difference between the, um, the two levels of any independent variable, say the, different, the gender difference, depends on the levels of the other independent variable, depends on grade level. And the difference that we saw between the grade levels in valuing of school depends on which gender you're talking about. That's a classic interaction. The relationship between the dependent variable and one independent variable depends on the third or the second independent variable. That, that's how it works. Finally, if we scroll down a little bit further, oh, let me just point out one thing here. Underneath this table, it says, what's the R square? That is all of your predictor variables and the interactions combined. How much of the variance do they explain in your dependent variable? Here we can see it's 0 0.014 for the R squared. That's about one and a half percent of the total variance in valuing of English schoolwork is explained by gender, grade level, and the interaction between the two. Not very much. This adjusted R square is adjusting for sort of the noise that's introduced by having multiple um, <clears throat> independent variables. 
kind of takes into account error. <coughs> and you can see it's a little bit smaller than the R square. All right, <clears throat> if we scroll down here, I ran this analysis again. And this time, <clears throat> I added a covariate, which was grade in English. What's somebody's, uh, what grade is the student getting in English? And what you can do with the covariate is you can say, um, are there differences between my groups once I take into account my covariate? In this case, do boys and girls differ in their valuing of English once I take into account how well they're actually performing in, in English, what their grade is? And are there differences between 9th and 11th graders in their valuing of English once I take into account how well they're performing in, in English? So here we can see that the F value for the um, covariate, and this is just what's the relationship between grade in English and valuing of English. This F value is statistically significant, saying that how much people, kids value English is um, correlated with their grade in English. The more, the better grade kids are getting, the more they value um, English work. Now, here's what we really want to know. Once we take that into account, once we control for grade in English, are the main effects and interaction effects still statistically significant? Here you can see that gender is no longer a statistically significant main effect. Once we account for the differences in achievement in English, there are no significant differences between boys and girls in their valuing of English. So that was wiped out. The main effect for grade level is still significant, and the main effect for the gender by grade level interaction is still significant, but as we can see, still very small effect sizes. So adding the covariate of performance in English, grade in English, um, wiped out the main effect for gender, but didn't wipe out the main effect for grade level or the interaction effects. So that's how you interpret um, the factorial ANOVA output from an SPSS analysis, and I hope that is helpful.